Hello. Well, I've had a lot of people asking for more information about the process of making homemade gel fuel uh, from this hub. So I thought I'd do a quick video to show you how you can make gel fuel using just three simple common household items. So here they are. We have uh, distilled white vinegar, which is 5% acetic acid that you can buy at any grocery store. It's 95% distilled water and 5% acetic acid. We have rubbing alcohol, which is 99% uh, strength. It's different from the 70% strength in that, obviously, there's 30% more uh, rubbing alcohol and less distilled water, which is a little bit important for when you're trying to get the ratios correct. And over here, we just have uh, limestone chalk. It's calcium carbonate. It's common uh, household chalk. And uh, there's different types of chalk, so you have to be a little bit careful. You need calcium carbonate for the reaction to work properly and I bought this online through Amazon because I wanted to make sure I got the right type of chalk. The only problem is is that the shipping kind of kills you because this was $4.99 for the, for the chalk and then it was $8.99 for the shipping. So I still left you a link at the bottom in case you want to check it out and if you do want to buy it I just recommend you take advantage of their free shipping and buy some other stuff on top of it so you don't have to pay the $8.99 just to buy $5 worth of chalk. It's a pound of chalk and it'll last you virtually a lifetime because you can make gallons upon gallons of gel fuel with it. So here we have, I have one half cup of the acetic acid, the white vinegar, and I have one eighth cup of the calcium carbonate chalk. That's the ratio. You want four to one. And I'm going to mix them in this jar right here. The only thing you need to know is that you're going to want to mix this outside because one of the byproducts of this reaction is it's going to produce CO2 and you don't want that in the house, it smells kind of nasty. So we're going to walk outside with this chalk. And the other thing that you're going to want to know is that you don't want to mix it all at once because it actually produces quite a bit of CO2, as I found out, and it can very easily overflow if you just dump everything in all at once. So if you be a little bit careful and just dump some of the, some of the chalk in there and then mix it up, just mix it slowly. You can see how much uh, how much CO2 is being produced just from that little bit of chalk. And the reaction will slow down the more chalk that you dump in there, but uh, you just want to be careful. I almost dumped too much in there just now, and that was just a little fraction of the, of the chalk that was in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep stirring this and keep mixing this. This is going to take a little bit of time, obviously, because the reaction needs to fully take place. So why don't we pick back up again in a few minutes when this is all mixed in, and I can show you what it looks like. Uh, so I just finished pouring all of the chalk in here, and I'm going to stir it for about five minutes just to make sure that the reaction fully takes place. And I just want to give a little bit of note on what exactly is happening here, the chemistry of it, just so that you can know. The calcium carbonate, when it mixes with the acetic acid, it forms uh, two compounds. One is calcium acetate, which is actually what we're looking for. That's the ingredient that allows the isopropyl alcohol to turn into gel fuel. And the other is uh, carbon dioxide, so calcium carbonate, obviously, with acetic acid acid turns into carbon dioxide and calcium acetate uh, with some water left over because the acetic acid is only 5% strength and 95% of that is just distilled water. So we're going to have a little bit of water left over with our calcium acetate and the carbon dioxide will just bubble away. That's all. So now we've mixed the calcium carbonate with the acetic acid white vinegar and uh, I've given it a couple of minutes, maybe two to three minutes to settle so that you can see uh, where the calcium acetate is versus where the rest of the water is that's left over from uh, the 95% distilled water that's in the white vinegar. So it's right down here. You can see that most of this solution is just made of the leftover water, this whole area, and then just a little bit at the bottom is, is our calcium acetate. And what needs to happen is before you can put the isopropyl alcohol in there, you have to reduce the amount of water that's in the solution because the final solution needs to be three parts water, two parts calcium acetate, and then nine parts, um, well, nine parts of isopropyl alcohol to whatever that solution is. So the two uh, parts calcium acetate, three parts water will be one tenth of the solution and then the nine parts isopropyl alcohol will be the rest. So what we need to do obviously is take down about half of this amount of water to make it three parts water, two parts calcium acetate and then we can add the rest of the isopropyl alcohol. So what I like to do is just make a mark of the original level 
of where the solution is and then we need to get rid of half of this water so go halfway down and just leave another mark and in order to evaporate that much water away you can either just stick it out in the sun like I'm about to do for a couple hours or you could put it in the oven at maybe 200 degrees for a few hours and just watch it closely to see when the uh, water reaches the final mark and then you'll be ready to mix so it's up to you but it's a nice warm sunny day out here in San Diego so I'm gonna go in, in the backyard and put it out in the sun for a few hours alright now we're back with uh, the almost finished product of the gel fuel we uh, took what we had the calcium acetate and the water and then we got rid of um, I got rid of a little bit over half of it, which you can see. I actually had to end up putting it in the oven for a few hours on a temperature of 200. The original mark is up here, and the halfway mark of the water is down there. You can see I got rid of a little more than halfway, and you can really get, get rid of um, between half and three-fourths of the water in there because what the water is going to do is it's going to affect the consistency of the final product. It's not really integral in, um, in how to how the product burns but it affects the consistency because the more water you have in there the more soupy it's going to be and the less water you have in there you know the more it's going to gel you, you still need some water but you don't need a whole lot so I burned away about two-thirds of it I let it evaporate out of the oven and you can see there's a third mark up here um, that I marked because what you need to do in order to make the gel fuel you have to have nine parts isopropyl alcohol this 99 percent strength right here to one part of the other water and calcium acetate and you can see I brought the tape measure out the uh, the liquid comes up almost to exactly one inch and the mark up here is um, is at nine inches and so um, this is going to be right around where we need to go uh, in order to have the gel fuel be at the right um, consistency and so I marked it and I tried to make it so that this one container was going to be almost completely full which you now see that it's going to be and so uh, in order to make the gel fuel it's actually gonna um, solidify on its own I just like to mix it up a little bit to get the calcium acetate in the water but yeah if you want to get in close to that and be able to see how if you add your isopropyl alcohol it's gonna start to gel up on its own maybe a little more you can see that how I'm going to start stirring it so more of the isopropyl alcohol can get in there. But you see how we just made a lot of cool gel fuel. And if you want, um, you can add more isopropyl alcohol in there. It's not really going to hurt anything because isopropyl alcohol is, um, you know, the active ingredient. It's what burns. So if you add too much isopropyl alcohol, it'll actually just kind of come up to the surface. You can see I probably didn't make quite enough. I could probably stand to add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. And like I said, if anything, more isopropyl alcohol is better than less. But you can see how, oh, see, I'm adding more. And now it's starting to get a little bit soupy. Because the more liquid you add, obviously, the more um, liquid the entire solution is going to be. So, you can see how we came out pretty close right there. That's where the mark is, and that's exactly uh, how much gel fuel we were able to make right exactly where the mark is. So, we did pretty good. And now, let's just take some of this gel fuel, and I can show you. This is an old uh, candle holder or an old candle, just a metal one. We tried burning this in glass before and it didn't exactly work out too well. But um, you can see, just light that on fire and that'll burn, just that little tiny amount will uh, burn for about 20 minutes. Just that little uh, tiny amount of gel fuel in that little candle holder. Um, so one other trick, one other thing that you can do, uh, which I mentioned in the article, is if you want to take your final gel fuel product and if you want to add um, some cooking oil into it it'll actually make the fire kind of crackle a little bit because if you mix cooking oil into this and not too much because you don't want to upset your consistency because we have a nice gel right now um, if you want to add cooking oil to it um, when the uh, when the fire reaches the little pockets of oil that are in the it'll make it crackle and um, it'll make it sound more like a real fire so uh, if you were to take this, which is probably about a soup can, if you were to put this into a soup can and put it into your uh, into your 
uh, artificial fireplace, it, it'll burn for at least a couple of hours because this little bit right here, uh, I tested it, it'll burn for about 20 minutes. So this much liquid, you'll get a bigger flame and it'll burn for about three hours. So if you're able to make uh, multiple soup canes and have them going all at once, you can do each of these. I think we used about a dollar worth of materials in this. So you can get a nice gel fuel fire for just a couple of bucks that'll last you for a couple of hours. I recommend making it in bulk. Like I said, this isn't the best way to buy 99% isopropyl alcohol. If you want to buy it in uh, more bulk, you'll be able to do this a lot cheaper. But as you can see, this came from, um, I think it was one eighth of a cup of chalk. Uh, which is super cheap. If you buy a pound of chalk like I did, it'll last you basically an entire lifetime worth of gel fuel. And it, it came from uh, one half of a cup of um, uh, vinegar, and then the rest is you know, mostly isopropyl alcohol. So this is what you want to get in bulk if you can. Everything else you can buy super cheap, but if you can find this somewhere like at a Costco or someplace in bulk, you can make a very nice supply of gel fuel for not a whole lot of money.